Well, how did the war affect your, your work? Was there any fear that you would lose the war, that Germany would invade England? Well, oh, I guess there was fear. Did you have that fear? Not really. I had uh, sort of... You had faith in that England would come through. The, uh, the Germans would be beaten. I see. They, would ha they had to be beaten. Yes. They would be beaten. Yes. There was no question about yes. it. It, was, it might be tough, but it wasn't so tough on me, you know, because I was reserved to do technical work. I don't know how right. <laughs> somebody had the wisdom to do that. Right. <laughs> so... Well, I understand that one of your duties at Rothamsted came in the form of this secondment by the British Foreign Office. Oh, yes, that was a curious thing. And it, that was to help monitor the freeness and fairness of post-war Greek elections. Yes. Can you tell us a little about your work there and how that led to a drastic career change oh, for yes. you? Well, you know, this, at the end of the war, or during the war and at the end, the world was polarized between left and right. And Greece was certainly polarized, polarized. I forget the names of the groups, but there was a strong left-wing group and a strong centrist right-wing group. And these two groups started fighting. You know, maybe you uh, recall some of the novels of this time. There was one called The Fratricides. And, uh, but uh, so the allies, which really consisted of Britain and the United States, decided to put an army in between these opposing forces. Mm -hmm. Then they decided that there would be an election. Then the election should be monitored. So what group should monitor the election? Well, it's sort of obvious that uh, real monitoring would be by statisticians. That is, how many dead people voted, how many people were prevented from voting, and all that sort right. of thing. So that was the story. And that was an interesting group because there were, you know, real statisticians there. The thing, that operation was headed by Raymond Jessen, who was a professor here in statistics. And uh, on in that group, were Jersey Neyman mm -hmm. and Joe Daly mm -hmm. and Ed Deming. Mm -hmm. so, and Oscar Kemper. Oh, <laughs> so I, was, I was really just a boy then. <laughs> so anyhow, that was very pleasant. And uh, so I go back to the election was distressing personally to me because... Why was that? The, the right wing, centrist right wing, one. I see. You know, and uh, so uh, I, you know, I was this usual young man. If you aren't left wing, there's something wrong That's with you. Right. Okay. So uh, although you were there to monitor freeness and fairness, you had a, a private uh, concern that you had hoped that the left would win. Oh, I'd hope, but uh, yes. but of course, you know, it, it had to. Uh, well, the idea was to find out in what in fact happened, and when we found out. Yes. I couldn't get out of Greece fast enough. You know, what, I was what sick. I, well, the, you know, the, uh, the center-right wing yes. won. Yes. And, uh, in a fair way, I understand. Well, in a fair way, yes. Of course, the, uh, <coughs> you see, the, the left wing was claiming that there were hundreds of thousands of people hiding in basements and whatever who didn't come out for the election. I see. But, in fact, uh, you know, they weren't there. And then, of course, when you get down to the end of it, if, if these people did not have some confidence in uh, the monitoring, uh, then uh, that's too bad. You know, the Allies were doing their best, and uh, it would have been, they would have called it, they would have called it fairly, if there had been, you know, dead people voting, that would have been noted, uh -huh. and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's Greece. Right. So you so you got out of Greece and back to uh, Rothamsted. Back tell to us, Rothamsted. Tell us what happened. Then when I got back to Rothamsted, the uh, 
uh, the leader of the statistical group, as I've said, was Ray Jessen. Here at Iowa State. At Iowa State. Right. And there was another one from Iowa State. And they needed staff here. So they, particularly Jessen, I guess, offered me a position here. And uh, I was slow in the uptake, in the uptake, and uh, then they put up some travel money. So eventually I came. I came for two years. And uh, that two years has extended to... Moderately. Uh, moderately, has extended moderately to 45. <laughs> right. So... Yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's move on to those early so, years in Iowa State. The early years, you, yes. You started work at Iowa State College, now Iowa State University, in January 1947, I believe. Can you tell us a little about your early days in the department, up until, say, your book on experimental design was published in 1952? Well, it was natural, I guess, that I would teach design of experiments. So I, that is what I started doing. But then the department lost staff, and really staff went down precipitously. We had two very good people, Mood and Brown, George Brown, but they left. And uh, so I suppose essentially I had to pick up the pieces. So I was teaching linear models and uh, probability right. out of Cramer. Right. And uh, then sort of inference of Neyman Pearson sort of thing. So you were teaching all the core courses for the graduate well, program. There for, for a year and a half maybe. So anyhow, I had the, you know, the, the main interest was design of experiments. Yes. And that fitted in very naturally to this school of agriculture. Yes. Because this discipline, design of experiments, was appreciated by agricultural research workers. Yes. I'd like to follow up on that, if I might. I used your design book in a course that I was teaching in Australia. Uh -huh. And I don't think I appreciated the corn and hogs examples until I no. moved to Iowa myself. Doesn't it strike you as rather ironic that your dislike of cleaning out farm sheds uh -huh. led you to Cambridge and then full circle back into the middle of it, although no longer actually cleaning uh, out I, the sheds? Well, you see, I wasn't really involved. That was other people were doing that. Well, let me ask the uh, question more seriously. Do you think your boyhood farming experience helped you in your work at Iowa State? Oh, there's no question about that, because I, having lived on the farm for, you know, nearly tw for 20 years, I knew what was going on in farming. Yes. Me. So I didn't really have to uh, didn't really have to learn anything. You know, the farming here was very much the same as in England, yes. and uh, that was very handy. Yes, that uh, excellent so, experience. <laughs> so you know, that was uh, that came in very to be extremely useful. I'd like to um, bring in a little personal side now, if if I might. You married Valder in June 1949, I think. Yes, that's right. One can't help but notice how informed and interested Val is in your career oh. and in your work. Well, Can you tell us more about Val's influence on your oh career? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, there's a, a bit of a hiatus in this. That I was married before, but that went kaput, right. whatever it is. So. You know, um, so I met Val, and uh, was she a graduate student? She here was a graduate Iowa State? student in agricultural economics from Australia, right? From think. Australia, right? So uh, here she, of course, agricultural economics was very strong some years before, but it, its strength had gone somewhat by the time she came here. Yes. So, she, but then she wasn't all that serious a student, I think. I think she needed some help in statistics, oh, didn't she? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we kept away from statistics. I see. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, she has, uh, she knows the whole of my career, and she knows a lot about statistics, you know. And I think has been a, a great 
helped to you, um, both professionally and uh, in, the, in your personal life, of course. Oh, yes. Um, but uh, as a member of the department, it's always struck me how generous Val has been towards the department and uh, what a great interest she takes in it. So, oh, uh, yes. Well, you know, the, the whole idea is to make the thing go. Yes. Make, and, you know, we were here this, we wanted this, we both wanted this to be a first-class shop. And I think, you know, this was achieved. So... Well, I, I actually would like to ask you a little about the shop, because I noticed that you often refer to our statistics operation here as the shop. The shop. <laughs> Having now been here eight years, I think the description is very apt. Um, but I admit to having been baffled by it at first. Uh -huh. Can you explain what you mean by the shop? Well, it was a full statistical enterprise of teaching, consulting, and research. And these constituent parts respected each other. Yes. You know, and sort of made it a shop. Yes. There was a sort of community of spirit. Yes, and I um, think I felt that. But originally, when I visited here in 1980, I kept looking for a shop counter <laughs> and couldn't find one. <laughs> well, I don't know why, how it came to be. I stumbled into that usage. But anyhow... I think it's it was, very apt. It was a good shop. Yes. Well, what influence do you think the shop has had on the subject of statistics? At both a campus, well, at a campus level, a national level, and an international level. Well, at the campus level, of course, it, it uh, managed to keep the teaching of statistics, almost all, all of it, in the department. So statistics had a big stature in the university evaluation. Then, uh, well, as regards the national status, you know, I think it's fair to say it still has that sta stature oh, in this day, but perhaps you um, it, it, remember it had, a, a bigger stature. Well, it, I guess, you know, that is sort of an interesting question because yeah. undoubtedly the shop <laughs> yes, <keep> got, <laughs> stature, got stature from the existence of Snedeker. Yes. who had written this book on statistical methods, which was known all over the world. Yes. And, of course, I knew about it. And uh, that was a reason for coming here. Yes. You see, uh, you know, I, was, I was going to a place that knew something about statistics. Yes. So, undoubtedly, Snedeker had a tremendous influence in developing this national, international status. Yes. On the uh, 